This is the skin and the skin is covered with epithelium, which is the purple bit that you can see on the top, supported by connective tissue, which contains fibres, blood vessels, uh, nerve supply, etc. Uh, and then underneath that, deep down, you can see this sort of blobby stuff. This is fat. So this is the subcutaneous tissue or the hypodermis. So in the skin, we call this the epidermis, the dermis and the hypodermis or subcutis. And that's where we get the term hypodermic needle or subcutaneous injection from. This skin is hairy. So we can see, we can't really see the hairs poking out the top in this particular section, but we can see the, the hair follicles. We can see the roots of the follicles down here. We can see the hair shaft here and the, the epithelial lining here. And so the skin really is um, a, an epithelial surface which grows down as hair follicles, as sebaceous glands to oil those uh, hairs and as sweat glands. So checking the epithelium of the skin here in more detail, um, we can see that it is several cells thick. Again, this is where the basement membrane would be. Lots of cells thick. And at the top, we've got um, this shapeless amorphous um, flakes, uh, which is keratin. So a stratified squamous epithelium is many layers thick and it's described by the shape of the cells at the surface, which you can see here are very flat. So that's why it's called a stratified squamous epithelium. In this case, a stratified squamous keratinizing epithelium because of the keratin flakes on top, which help with waterproofing and antibacterial properties of the skin. In other stratified squamous epithelia, you don't have this keratin layer. You would not see this in any other stratified squamous epithelium just in skin. If you check the gastroesophageal podcast, you will see a stratified squamous epithelium that is non-keratinizing. So the reason that we have stratified squamous epithelium is in areas of wear and tear. Because there are many cell layers, they are protective. In terms of the skin, the addition of the keratin provides waterproofing and provides some um, further protection against microbes uh, but in general a stratified squamous epithelium is strong and tough and so we find it on the skin on the outside of our bodies but also inside our oral cavity um, and for the esophagus again another area of wear and tear so we also find it in the anal canal and in the vaginal canal again all areas of wear and tear in terms of the epithelial cells in this layer, in the skin, they're called keratinocytes, but as well as keratinocytes within this layer, we have three other cell types. Uh, one type that sits along the base, uh, which is the melanocyte and provides us with the pigment in our skin. Uh, Merkel cells, which are slowly adapting uh, receptors in the skin as well. And um, it, in the higher up layers of the skin, uh, we find um, dendritic Langerhans cells, which are antigen presenting cells. Underneath the epithelium, we find the dermis, and that's mostly connective tissue, which is mostly collagen fibres, you can see them here, uh, and few cells, that's characteristic of connective tissue to have few cells and lots of fibres. And as we age, we produce fewer of these collagen fibres uh, and that's why our skin becomes saggier and more wrinkly as we age. So here we've got something that's grown down from the surface. You can see because it's purple here, similar color, this is epithelial. Uh, and then you see these sort of bubbly cells here with a nucleus and a very bubbly cytoplasm. These are sebaceous glands producing sebum, which is the uh, sort of waxy uh, oil that coats our hair. And then you can see in low magnification, you can see how many of them there are. They're quite a lot dotted throughout. So each, each hair follicle will have at least one sebaceous gland feeding into it. You'll also see sweat glands. So here's one here. Again, a similar color to the epithelium. This is the, where the sweat gland would open out onto the surface. The duct is disappeared somewhere in a different uh, section, not in the section we're currently looking at, but the gland itself is down at the bottom here. And again, you can see epithelial cells lining lumens. It's a coiled duct structure, produces sweat, which comes up through 
um, a duct and out onto the surface. And the other thing that we can see, hopefully, is when you look at the hair follicles themselves, uh, they've usually got a piece of smooth muscle that attaches to them, like this here. And this is the erector pili muscle, which helps the hairs to stand up when it's cold. And there's another one here as well. So each hair follicle will have associated with it a sebaceous gland and an erector pili muscle. And then nestled between, we see lots of different sweat glands. There's a sweat gland there, and there's part of the duct of a sweat gland here. In summary, the skin is composed of three layers, an epidermis, which is a stratified squamous epithelial layer, which is keratinized. The cells are called keratinocytes and are interspersed with pigment cells, which are called melanocytes, antigen presenting cells, which are called Langerhans cells, and Merkel cells, which are slow uh, adapting receptors. Underneath that, deep to that, we have the dermis, which is mainly connective tissue, uh, collagen um, fibres and the fibroblasts that produce them. Uh, as well as that, the, the dermis contains the appendages or the epithelial downgrowths, which are the hair follicles themselves, uh, the sebaceous glands and the sweat glands. Each hair follicle is also associated with an erector pili muscle. And then deep to that is the fat tissue, the subcutaneous fat or hypodermis. And that's the skin. Thank you for listening to another podcast brought to you by School of Surgery. Remember, you can follow us on Facebook at School of Surgery, on iTunes, on Podomatic at schoolofsurgery.podomatic.com and finally, by searching School of Surgery on YouTube. Thank you very much and see you next time.